Okay. Okay, we'll get started, right? Um, let's pray before we start. Let's pray. And um, as the Bible declares in Romans chapter 8, um, verse 26, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Okay, the Holy Spirit, He helps us in our weaknesses. Here's the interesting thing. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Okay, Romans chapter 8, verse 26. You can read it in your own Bibles, in your own languages. First of all, it says, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Secondly, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So the Holy Spirit is our helper, right? And um, this is one of the ways by which he helps us. He helps us in our weaknesses. So what does that mean? The help that he gives helps us, uh, enables us to overcome that weakness, right? So that is the intention with which the Holy Spirit helps us. Okay, is there a weakness? What is that weakness? Let me help you overcome, right? Let that be changed into strength. Let my... So the Lord is saying that, let my strength overshadow that limitation, overshadow that weakness. Okay, And, and the thing is this, sometimes we do not know what we should pray for. Okay, We do not know what we should pray for as we ought to pray. right? Because the thing is, you know, let's say, for example, it's, it's something, you know, maybe three choices, three options are there, and we do not know what option to take. Okay, should I go left? Should I go straight? Should I go right? Like we don't know. But the Holy Spirit, who knows the mind of the Father, the Holy Spirit, who knows, who has infinite wisdom, He helps us. Right? We don't know what we should pray for, as we ought to pray, but the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings. Okay? So with that understanding, right? let's pray in faith. Right? Let's pray in faith, saying, God, you know, I need help. Right? Let my weaknesses be changed into strength. Right? So you are the helper. So you, you begin to pray. You know, you begin to pray in your own words. You begin to pray in the spirit. You begin to pray in tongues. You begin to pray. Lord, I see this as a weakness. You know, whatever that weakness could be. You know, maybe you, it has been part of your life for years. Right? I see this as a weakness. Holy Spirit, help me now. And the Holy and the, and God, our uh, Holy Spirit, you know, He will, like, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses to overcome, right? So just pray and say, Lord, according to Your Word, I pray. According to Your Word, I ask. Help me overcome this weakness. Okay. And the second part of it is that when we don't know what we should pray for, as we ought to pray, He helps us. He makes intercession for us. So you begin to pray in tongues right he makes intercession for us you begin to pray in tongues you begin to pray strong in the spirit right intensely passionately and be stirred up and just pray out saying god you make you're making intercession for me even as i pray right now i thank you i don't know what i should pray for as i ought to pray but you make intercession for me with groanings which cannot be uttered so god i believe and in faith i pray Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just begin to pray. Just open your mouths and just begin to pray loud enough so you can hear yourself. Pray in tongues. You can hear yourself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You're the one who changes our weaknesses into strengths, oh, Father God. You are our strength, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. We bless your name, God. Come, Holy Spirit, have your way. Come, Holy Spirit, have your way, God. Come, Lord. Fill us, Lord, today. Fill us today, Father God. Anoint us afresh, O oh, Father God. Yes, Lord. Let all the things, O oh, Father God, that are holding us back, Lord, let it be, let it be broken, O oh, Father God. Let all the chains be broken. Let all the weights, O oh, Father God, give us the wisdom to put it away, God, so that we can run with endurance the race that you have set before us. Come, Holy Spirit, have your way, Lord. We invite you today. We invite you today, Lord. Yes, Master. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
maybe some of us are feeling like you know it's like a tap that is leaking lord there is so much that you have given so much that you have filled with me with but then it's it's getting wasted it's getting wasted but there is a slow leak somewhere and it's getting wasted uh, you know if you're feeling that way may the holy spirit fix that may the holy spirit fix that area that thing that is causing it could be something small and but it's causing a lot of damage right uh, it's causing it's emptying you or it's draining you off of emotions and draining you of power that small thing just begin to pray you can yes lord yes lord come come upon us like the rain of father god fall upon us like the rain of father god let there be refreshing today lord let there be seasons of refreshing today oh father god in our hearts lord right now god right now lord now those of us who have never you know not yet uh, begun to pray in the spirit you no know, take that step of faith take that step of faith and speak out you know you could be watching online you could be in person it doesn't matter just take that step of faith and speak out those words that you sense are rising up in your spirit and maybe he has given you an utterance he has given you a syllable speak that out faithfully and let more um, be released let more be released let the river flow yes lord we pray for new utterance god be new utterances of father god we pray for more lord yes lord let your river flow father god yes lord hey the river of the holy spirit oh yes bringing about freshness bringing about change washing away the regrets washing away the pain washing away those things that need to be taken away thank you lord we bless your name god we bless your name oh father god we thank you lord we thank you that we have you always with us lord we thank you that we can always turn to you father god and we thank you for the new things that you're doing today father god yes lord we thank you for the old things that have been taken away father god from us father god we thank you for the new things that you're releasing in us father god even today god new vision god new dreams oh father god new things oh god new assignments being released oh father god gifts being released oh father god we thank you we bless your name we bless your name we give you all the praise at this time and we give you all the glory come holy spirit in jesus name we pray amen 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 yeah let's continue to press in for more of god right um because uh, you know there's nothing wrong in doing that there's nothing wrong, you know, saying, God, I'm not satisfied. I want to press in for more, I'm asking you for more. Right? And the Lord is willing to do that. Right? Mark chapter 4 talks about how we can go with bigger measure. Right? That measure is our hunger and our desire. Right? See, I can go to the I can go to God, I can go to the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, you know, fill me. Okay, I just finished the tea. Mm -hmm. It's become cold. So I can go and say, Lord, here's this is my desire. This is my hunger. Fill me. And the Lord will do that. And he's willing, he'll fill. Or I can go and say, Lord, you know, this is my desire. Slightly bigger container. Lord, this is my desire. This is my hunger. Fill me. Right, or you can you know it depends. So we put limits. We put limits. Are you saying God? I don't know if I should ask. No, the Lord says ask, and you will see. Right. So let's go to God with a bigger measure, with a bigger, greater hunger, and uh, whatever He you know he, he wants to fill us. And this is the season to do that. You know, even as we are learning, even as we are. Yeah, intentionally for that, right? We want God to do big things. We want God to put things in us. We want God to equip us. This is the time, right? So let's pursue God with everything uh, that we've got. Okay. Okay, we, we're going to continue with um, where we left off. We have been looking at um, the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer, right? Chapter 8. And uh, we looked at several topics how the Holy Spirit helps us. Uh, we looked at other dimensions of Christian life. Um, so I'm going to come back to you know being led by the Spirit. We'll come back to that a little later. 
but uh, we're going to look at you know how the holy spirit helps us in ministry like how the holy spirit helps us to serve to serve him and to serve his people right so let's look at acts chapter 1 and verse 18 okay, acts chapter 1 Okay, so Acts chapter 1 talks about ministry. So we, we all know, know that we need the Holy Spirit for Him to strengthen us, for Him to give us revelation, all that we studied. You know, in ministry, when, we, when you look at it, uh, Acts chapter 1 and verse 18 talks about the fact that, um, uh, uh, sorry, is it 118? Yeah, 118. Um, Sorry, uh, let's look at um, chapter 1 and verse 8. It's not 18. I'm sorry, there's a typo there. Um, the reference there. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, right? Uh, where the Lord Jesus says, but you shall receive power. Okay? You shall receive power. Is, that, is it there? Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. Okay? So what is that? First part. It's talking about empowering, enabling, right? You shall receive something, what? Power. And then the second part of that verse talks about ministry. Yes? Do you see that? It says, and you shall be witnesses. So when the Holy Spirit fills us with his power, we shall be witnesses. That is, there is a becoming that happens. We sh and you shall be witnesses to me. And he talks about Jerusalem and, and Judea and Samaria and the end of the world. So it talks about ministry. So the Holy Spirit is the one who empowers us for ministry. Okay. So the basic, of course, qualification is one needs to be a believer. One needs to have a call and all that. You know, what kind of ministry, etc. we need to. But then... It is he who actually empowers us for ministry, whatever kind of ministry that we might be called to, right? He is the one who empowers us. Okay, let's look at uh, one more verse. First Thessalonians chapter 1 and verses 5 and 6. Okay. Um, First Thessalonians chapter 1. If you've already turned there, you can probably read it out. Okay, I, I forgot it. First Thessalonians chapter one. First Thessalonians chapter one and verse five it says, "For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power." Okay, so Paul is declaring this to the Thessalonian believers. He's saying, "Our gospel," meaning when they shared the gospel, when they ministered the gospel to them, says it did not come to you. In word only, okay, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance, as you know, what kind of men we were among you for your sakes. Okay, so, so Paul is saying that you know, when we minister, when we communicated, when we served you, this is how the gospel came to you. Okay. So the gospel came to you not only in words, which means, you know, when we speak, we use words, right? So not only in words, it's not just understanding of, okay, this is what the gospel is. Jesus Christ he came, lived a sinless life. He went, he died on the cross. He carried my sin. He carried my sickness, everything on the cross. And um, he removed it. He destroyed it so that I can be with him, right, forever. So that I can be with him. He changed my destiny. So that under, of course, they shared that, right? And you know, when we are called to share the gospel, that is what we do. But he's saying and adding another element to it. What is he saying? It came to you not only in word but also in power. So what does that mean? That means that it was in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
and it was in the power of the holy spirit it, it could mean maybe they were you know they were held in bondage and they were delivered right and the, this holding being held in bondage could be wrong ideas deception it could be spiritual bondage like maybe they needed deliverance oppression right we read in, in the book of acts as we read we were reading and how many places people were actually held in bondage we read about samaria philip goes there you no know, they were under the influence of the enemy in philippi again the same thing right the girl who was actually under the influence of oppressed by the evil spirit she was delivered right and all other places that they went to people saw deliverance people saw healing people saw the power or experienced the power of the holy spirit okay so he's saying you know our ministering was not in words only but in the power of the holy spirit but also with power and in he's saying in the holy spirit whatever all that god the holy spirit wanted to bring in wanted to confirm all that it could be wisdom it could be revelation he brought in that it is moving in the gifts of the holy spirit right so that is how they minister so paul is very clear he's saying you know it was not just words it was not just saying okay this is what it is it's a good concept you know uh, understand it receive it uh, it's a new thing maybe you know you you need to try it no it came with much assurance because of their lives it came full of the holy spirit and with power okay so that is something for us to understand that this is available for each one of us as ministers of god right so we know when we share the gospel we can we can share with that expectation when we when we serve when we minister we can minister with that faith and expectation that the power of the holy spirit will be manifest why we ourselves have been filled with the holy spirit right we've been empowered for ministry okay so power for ministry comes from the holy spirit secondly we see the gifts of the spirit okay uh, we're going to actually study in detail like we've been hearing uh, 1 corinthians 12 Okay, one Corinthians chapter twelve, and uh, sorry, um, it, Paul says, you know, I don't want you to be ignorant. Ignorant of what? Ignorant means without knowledge, right? Without understanding, without knowledge. So he's saying, you know, I concerning spiritual gifts, I do not want you to be ignorant. One Corinthians twelve, verse one. Okay, and then um, and then he goes on to uh, list down the gifts of the spirit. and uh, we we see that how many gifts are listed there no one how many gifts holy spirit gifts are listed in 1 corinthians 1 um sorry 1 corinthians 12 verses 1 to 11 nine gifts sure okay seven no okay there are nine gifts okay if you if you count you will see nine gifts um that is verses 8 9 10 11 or uh, 10 8 9 and 10 talk about the gifts so there are three mentioned in each verse i think nine gifts are there okay so paul says that this these gifts of the spirit okay um look at verse um, verse 7 okay verse 7 he's calling that the manifestation of the spirit okay what does it say in hindi manifestation of the spirit how do you say that verse 7 pavitra atma ka parita parat pragati karna okay he's he's making himself known right so the manifestation of the spirit is given to all so he's saying this is the holy spirit making himself known look at the purpose is given to each one for the profit of all okay so that people can be blessed for the benefit of all okay so who who does that who releases that the holy spirit right he releases or he makes himself known through the gifts okay so we need to understand that through the gifts of the spirit even though as you know human beings we might be having weaknesses not really representing god truly 
right? The way we should be. The Holy Spirit chooses to use us, right? Chooses to use us and release or make himself known through these gifts so that for the sake of others, others might receive the gospel, that others might be blessed. Okay, so he says that it is given for all, to each one for the profit of all, and goes on to uh, list the list the gifts. Right, so we see that the gifts of the Spirit uh, is given to each one. Okay, let's look at a um, uh, couple of other verses. Uh, One Thessalonians five, verses eighteen. Five, verse eighteen. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Okay. So, give thanks. Do not quench the spirit. Okay. We studied this, right? That we are capable of quenching the spirit. Okay. What does quench the spirit mean? Uh, so you're putting water and you're you know, putting out the fire, stopping. Okay? So you might say, you know, the Holy Spirit is God. He is all powerful. Yes or no? Right? He's all powerful. He's omnipotent, all powerful God. But the fact is that you and I can stop the work of God, work of the Holy Spirit. We can quench the work of the Spirit in our own lives um, by not obeying or by not cooperating with him, right? When, we, when he leads us, when he says, okay, you do this, and when we don't do it, right, we quench, we put out the fire of the Holy Spirit in our own lives. It's possible, right? So it says, do not do that, right? Do not quench the Spirit. Um, it is not only in the work of gifts, or it could be anything, right? But here he's talking about gifts, and particularly he's talking about prophecy, right? Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies. No. What does that mean? That means that um, you know, don't hate prophecies. Don't hate prophecies. So, what is there to hate prophecy? You know, how can one hate prophecy? What is a prophecy? Prophecy is inspired speaking. Somebody speaking, somebody doing something as inspired by the Holy Spirit. So why should he write, don't despise prophecies? What do you think? Why do you think he's writing that? Don't despise prophecies. How can that happen? Ignore the truth, okay. Mm. Okay, some people ignore the truth. Okay, maybe we can say we are they are ignorant of the truth, okay, about the gifts, about the prophecy. So they're saying that, hey, I don't want anything to do with this. Or maybe some people could be hurt because of you know wrong representation. I abuse the gift. I abuse the gift, and then you are hurt by it. You know, let's say I just come and say, "Okay, uh, what, what's your name? Aman, no? Aman, this is Aman, and yours name is." Okay, I say, Abhishek, stand up. Okay, Abhishek, God's saying that you are, you know, you're not getting up in the morning, and right, and you need to pray, and you need to do, and I'm doing that in front of everybody. Let's say, right, and Abhishek is very hurt. Abhishek is like. Yeah, God, I know, you know, he, he might say, okay, that is the truth, but then that's not the way to do it, right? This person, actually, he, in front of everybody, he humiliated me. So what does Abhishek do? All this prophecy business, I don't want. If this is how prophecy works, I don't want it. Right? If it is to humiliate people, if it is to put fear in people, if it is, you know, anything like that, damaging people's life, I don't want it. Right? So here he's saying, do not despise prophecies. You know, maybe something happened because of which 
you are despising prophecies. And he goes on to say, test all things. Test all things. Hold on to what is good. Okay, when you test it, when you test the prophecy, is it from God? Is God really speaking? Is it in the word of God? Right? That's how you test it, right? Does it contradict the word of God? You hold it. If it's good, hold it. Hold fast to what is good. Get a good grip on what is good. It also means don't hold tightly or just let go of things that are not good. Yeah? Let go of things that are not good. So, um, yeah, uh, Brad, by not taking it into consideration. So, so he's saying, you know, let go of things that are not good. Hold on to things that are good. Test all things. So the Holy Spirit releases the gifts of the Spirit. He makes himself known to us okay, um, in ministry. Okay. Then he also does mighty signs and wonders. Romans 15 and verse 19. Let's look at that. The Holy Spirit does mighty signs and wonders. So let's, um, let's not say that you know those days are over right romans 15 verse 19 uh, and we, maybe we can read verse 18 also the paul says for i will not dare to speak of any of those things which christ has not accomplished through me in word and deed to make the gentiles obedient in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the spirit of god so that and he mentions the places from Jerusalem and roundabout to Illyricum. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. So over and over again, he says, you know, this is how it happened. It happened through the, the gifts were released. I, when I came to share the gospel, it was not just the words, but it was the power of God and full of the Holy Spirit. And he says here, in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Holy Spirit. So these mighty signs and wonders, talking about the miraculous. Right? He's talking about the supernatural. So, again, just like the gifts, you know, sometimes we have this thing that, you know, um, all these mighty supernatural things and all that, you know, I don't want to do. I don't want anything to do with it. But the fact is that the early church walked in it, ministered in it, ministered that to people, served people. Right? So it's from God. It is of God. So he's saying, in mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Holy Spirit, or by the power of the Spirit of God. So it's not man who's manufacturing. It's not you know anything else. It's not some show, but it's the power of the Spirit of God. Okay, so mighty signs and wonders. So he's saying, hey, this is how I preach the gospel in all these areas, in all these regions. Okay, so we can be again. We can be open. We can uh, pursue this. 1 Corinthians 2, um, 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 4, I think. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 4, yeah. Saying, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Okay, what is your understanding of it? 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 4. Uh, when you read that, what do you understand? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, it's not human learning, wisdom, experience. Right? But it comes from spirit-inspired wisdom. Right? Spirit-inspired, spirit maybe uh, learned, right? Um, or spirit taught. But it's also saying, in demonstration of the spirit and power. Okay? So we, we saw 1 Corinthians uh, 12. What is the what are the gifts of the spirit? This is a manifestation. You, know, you use that in the word, right? Pragati, right? he's making himself big, making himself known. This is how he is showing himself strong through the, through the gifts of the Spirit. And so he says here that in demonstration of that, 
in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That is how I came and I ministered. Okay, so for the believer, for the minister of God, okay, how many of us are called for ministry? Okay. Okay, I can see some people who are not. <laughs> okay, you know, every believer is called for ministry, yes or no? Yeah. Why do you say that? Why do you say every believer is called for ministry? Huh? We're all chosen. Okay, but how, are we called for ministry? Jesus commissioned us to preach the gospel. Okay, so only the gospel you preach. It's commissioned us. But how can we say that every believer, okay, every believer is a minister? Suppose you are a pastor of a church and there are people who are coming, you know, maybe 50 people, whatever. And are they called for ministry? Yes? Okay, so how, how can we be sure? Huh? In faith. So he's, a, he's not an unbeliever, he's a believer. Yeah, but how can I say that every believer is a minister of God? Somebody who's come, come to serve, you know, they could be serving in different ways, right? They could be preaching the gospel. Of course, all of us are called to preach the gospel. They could be serving in different ways, ministering. Uh, but every believer is called to minister. Maybe not as, you know, as a pastor, right? They could be called to minister in different ways. Okay, so don't forget this verse. Okay, ready? <laughs> okay, turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Okay, never ever forget this verse. This is why we can truly say that every believer, every child of God, right, is a minister. Ephesians chapter 4 and verses 11 and 12. Okay, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. Okay, I can see some answers here. Um, God gave authority for everyone. Yes. Okay, so let's look at Ephesians 4, verse 11. Okay, it says, and he, he himself, talking about Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Okay, this is what we call as a fivefold ministry gift, right? Um, uh, and he's talking about how these are placed in the body of Christ. Verse 12, for the equipping of the saints, right? Who are the saints? You are the same. I am the same, right? Believer, the sanctified ones, the set apart ones, right? Saints, what does it say? For the work of ministry. So the set apart ones, the believers, to be equipped for the work of ministry, which means every saint of God, every believer, every sanctified one is called for ministry. There is a ministry call in each one of our lives. Not Maybe not everybody is called to be an evangelist. You know, the ministry, office of the evangelist. Maybe not everybody is called to be a prophet. But we are called to ministry. right? And the fivefold gift exists to equip. One of the things that they will do, or one of the things that the fivefold is expected to do, is to equip. Meaning, show, teach. Right? And say, okay, this is how we need to do the work of the evangelist. This is how we need to do the work of the, the pastor. This is how we need to do the work of the, the uh, or you know, prophesy and so on. For the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, which means that the body of Christ, the body of believers, to become strong, edifying, right? Spiritually strong. So this is what it is, okay. Okay, so Ephesians um, 4, 11, and 12. Okay, so there's a question, Sunny Moses. Um, some example, is there any person in the Bible who quenched the Holy Spirit to understand it better? Okay, I'm just thinking of, um, you know, the, the book of Acts, where um, uh, when we read about Ananias and Sapphira, I don't know if that's a, I mean, we can call it quenching. 
you know, Ananias and Sapphira, they come, they, you know, they sell, uh, they sell their property or sell their land, and they, uh, you know, Acts chapter five, right? And they come and they give part of it. See, they they were sincere in the sense they wanted to give, they had a heart to give, but they wanted to kind of somehow kind of show as if it was the whole thing. Right? So, and they brought part of it and then they gave it. And then, and Peter says, you know, you lied to the Holy Spirit. Okay. So I don't know if we can call it quenching. Uh, that's one example that I could think of. Uh, the second one is in the book of Galatians, right? Paul is writing to the Galatian church and uh, he's actually reprimanding them, rebuking them. Okay. Why? He's saying, uh, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 1, he says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? Uh, this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are now being made perfect by the flesh? And so on, right? He says in verse 5, Now, therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So they had a unique problem in the sense some people had come to the these, these Galatian believers and told them that, okay, you're born again, but you must be circumcised. You need to keep the law. Okay? So Paul is writing to them quite strongly, and he's saying, you know, by faith... You receive the spirit by faith. Uh, the you receive the supply of the spirit in the sense he works miracles among you, and it was through faith. Now, are you going back to the law? And uh, you are actually, if you build those things um, again that you have destroyed, you make yourself a transgressor. So I'm, I'm just thinking, um, Sunny, that um, you know maybe I, I could just think of these two things. I, uh, as people who quenched the work of the Spirit, especially the Galatian church uh, believers, right? Okay. I uh, hope that helps. Right. Okay, so let's look at um, two words to communicate the wisdom of God comes from the Holy Spirit. Godly counsel. Okay. So we need... Yeah, good question. Can we evangelize? Can an evangelist prophesy? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so we, we actually we, you learn about it uh, in I think probably next semester. I don't know, but um, maybe. But then there is a see everybody. It's like this, you know, you fall down, okay, you hurt yourself. Can you uh, wash the wound and put a bandaid? You can do it. Right? You can just clean it with the Dettol or something. You can put a bandage and say, okay, I just, you know, while playing, I fell. But can you call yourself a doctor? Okay. So, but can, you can take care of the wound. You can clean it. You know, okay, if I put a bandage, I keep, no, I can. But you can't call yourself a doctor. Right? Or if somebody is unwell, maybe has fever or something, you can do some first aid thing. So, similarly, you know, when we look at all these uh, in Ephesians 4 11, we, we see these. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. So we can lead the Bible study. We can plant a church. We can do some pioneering work. But we, we cannot call ourselves an apostle unless we are appointed by God, or appointed by the Lord as an apostle. Okay. Same thing. Can we prophesy, all of us? The answer is yes, because we can hear the voice of God. We can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and we can speak it out. Right? That is prophecy. We can, as inspired. But can I call myself a prophet because I hear the voice of God? No. Because we see the ministry gift of the prophet is different from every believer who's called to prophesy. Right? Because that's the gift of the Spirit. And we, each one of us, we are designed to hear the voice of the shepherd. The Lord Jesus says, my people, my sheep, they know me, they hear my voice, they know me and they follow me. Which means we are, you know, we, we are designed as believers to hear the voice of the shepherd. 
and then maybe speak out and obey that is um, you know prophecy right so we can prophesy but we not call we cannot call ourselves prophets unless god typically appoints us as a prophet there's something more also you know to to be a prophet where he gives us authority over you know geographical regions uh, prophesying announcing the moves of god and all that so so that's the thing yeah so i can call, i can evangelize i can share the gospel but as he called me to a ministry of evangelism or as he called me to an evangelist depends if i'm called then i can, you know so that's the thing right okay okay so um uh, we we receive godly counsel you know wisdom godly wisdom godly counsel and uh, let's look at 1 corinthians uh, chapter 7 Okay, um, so uh, 1 Corinthians 7 is, is talking about marriage, he's talking about um, you know um, celibacy, um, he's talking about remarriage and all those things. And at the end of it, this is what he says. Um, according to my judgment, and I think I also have the spirit of God. Okay, 1 Corinthians 7, verse 40, the verse, the last verse. So we see that the Holy Spirit gives us the wisdom to give counsel. What is counsel? To give advice. Okay, the Holy Spirit gives us. And we need that for certain aspects of ministry, or maybe even all aspects of ministry. We need the wisdom of God. So godly counsel is made available for us through the Holy Spirit. So that's why Paul is saying, you know, you, even after he, if you read through the whole thing, he says, you know, this is my opinion and this is what God says. Okay, he's giving his wisdom, his experience, and he's saying that I think I also have the Spirit of God, which means that all this is coming by the Holy Spirit. Right? Holy Spirit is a source. Right? And if we turn to 1 Corinthians 12, we see that there is another gift of the Holy Spirit, which is called the Word of Wisdom. Okay, if you see verse um, um, verse seven, I think, right? Verse eight, verse eight, one Corinthians twelve, verse eight says, "For to one is given the Word of Wisdom." Okay, so wisdom is a piece of God's immense wisdom. You know, a part of it, a word. So he gives us that wisdom, and that's counsel or that's advice in order to solve the problem, which takes care of a particular need. Right? That's what wisdom or godly counsel does. Right? Um, there is a need for wisdom to solve something, um, to take care of something, and God provides that. So word of wisdom. OK, then um, 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 3. Okay, so, so these, are, these are things that are, you know, we are talking about how the Holy Spirit helps us in ministry. Okay, and this is very encouraging for us uh, who, who are equipping, equipping ourselves for ministry because the Holy Spirit is with us. He has not left us alone to do the work of ministry. He is with us. In fact, if you look at ministry, we are partnering with Him. Okay, it's not like saying, God, you know, I want to do this, you help me. Now we're saying, God, you are doing something. I want to be part of what you're doing. Okay. So if you look at um, you know uh, Second Corinthians and chapter three and verse three, okay, Paul says, You are an epistle of Christ. Okay, he's talking about those believers. You are an epistle. What's an epistle? Epistle Matlab. Okay. Epistle is a letter. Epistle is a letter, right? When we see, you know, epistle according to Paul. Epistle to the Corinthians. Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians. You know, that's how you know, in some churches they, before reading that, you know, particular portion, they say, okay, Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians, which means one Corinthians. And epistle is a letter. So here Paul is saying, you are an epistle of Christ. Meaning, if, you know, if, if I look at you, it is God, it is the Lord Jesus who is actually writing a letter, who has written a letter, and you are a letter, you are carrying a message to someone. OK, 
okay, the very life that you live, it's the message of Christ to someone. Okay, so you are an epistle of Christ. Okay. And then he says, written in our hearts, sorry, uh, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the spirit of the living God. So he's saying, you know, you are ministered by us. We are ministering, but it's not with ink written. You know, this epistle, your life, uh, you know, that is speaking, you know, that all that effort, we serve, like we minister, written not with ink, but by the spirit of the living God. He's saying, you no, know, of course, God used us. And God used Paul to establish the church. God used Paul to teach the believers about these gifts and so on. So he used him. But he's saying, you know, that life that you live, the transformed life, it's not with ink or not by natural means, right? Not by natural methods, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what he says, right? Not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of the heart. Okay. Um, okay, we'll stop here and then we'll come back.